we now turn to political theorist Francis Fukuyama's thesis, The End of History. Much of our study up until this point has dealt with the individual characters, whether they're fiction or, or real, who define American society in the 1980s and 1990s. What Fukuyama does for us is he, he takes a picture of the world from 30,000 feet, and he suggests that we can understand at the macro level what's happening not only in the United States, but what's happening across the globe. What's happening is what he calls the end of history. Here, drawing upon the German philosopher, Hegel, he suggests that a pattern has developed throughout the modern course of history. And that pattern looks something like the following. For Hegel, change occurs both at the ideational and the material level. And what determines the change both ideationally in terms of the ideas that we have about the world, in terms of our consciousness, and at the material level, what, what determines that change is what he calls the dialectic. Let me explain. How is the dialectic working itself out ideationally? Well, here Hegel would say that someone comes up with a thesis, another person comes up with an antithesis, which forms thirdly a synthesis that becomes a new thesis. And the history of ideas in the world has been simply that, that dialectical pattern of thesis, antithesis, synthesis, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, on and on and on and on. That dialectic is also at play in the material world. It's at play in the fact that something, being, comes out of nothing. When being comes out of nothing, it then becomes becoming, which is a being that goes in and out of nothing. Now, this may sound very, very complex, but when you think about the way that things are created into this world and go out of being in this world, here you have a pattern dealing with material that follows, Hegel argues, the ideational pattern. Now, the question becomes, the chicken or the egg? Is it the ideas that make the material or the material change that makes the ideas? Well, the most famous 19th century advocate of Hegel's ideas, Marx, argued a left type of Hegelianism where it's material change that drives ideational change. But what Fukuyama believes is the reverse. It really is our level of consciousness, our ideas, that then change the material world that we live in. And he suggests the following. The pattern in the 19th and 20th century is a pattern towards an ideational conception of the world that is as follows. Ideationally, we believe what? That no final synthesis can be formulated. That no moral absolute, no, no thought, no idea about justice or right uh, can be stated and believed in completely and made to be the final statement on the matter. So what do we do ideationally if we can't come up with a final synthesis that ends with a moral absolute? Well, we're open to all perspectives, all ways of defining the mystery of life. And that's exactly what Western liberal society promises, that everyone will have the ability to think about things on their own. Right? Do unto others as you would have done unto you, but allow others to be free to choose their own way. Well, in the material world, Fukuyama says that the direction that we've moved in in the West is a direction towards determinacy. Our belief in our capitalist system, our belief in free market economics, has led us to be able to create this amazing abundance of wealth. So a Western society that is very indeterminate ideationally, but determinate in its belief in its ability to create economic well-being, is going to be the final synthesis of Western history. Now, he argues at the end of his piece, however, that what, what might seem to be a great ending to the story of the West, this end of history, will not be so. Why? He argues that for individual human beings, the struggle for recognition, the willingness to risk one's life for a purely abstract goal, the worldwide ideological struggle that called forth daring courage, imagination, and idealism, will be replaced by economic calculation, the endless solving of technical problems, environmental concerns, and the satisfaction of consumer demands. Post-end of history will amount to a perpetual caretaking of the Museum of World History. Not a place where we want to live because everything has been solved for us.